Uh, Resuming debate, the Honorable Member for Ambitsibita Meskamang. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I believe that the main question here today is why it is so important to decriminalize marijuana now. And of course, the first answer is to avoid uh, legal consequences, They're, for example, a criminal record for over 50,000 people per year who are still being convicted of uh, simple possession of cannabis, even though the government had clearly signaled its intent to legalize. So it's truly absurd, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister himself admitted that he had uh, consumed marijuana. So, you know, that means that at some point during uh, that uh, time, he would have been in possession himself of marijuana. And so he admitted that he had smoked marijuana while he was a member of Parliament. But the government is continuing to tell over 50,000 people that they will be stuck with a criminal record, whereas the Prime Minister had admitted that he had himself done exactly the same thing. So I think it is very important to keep that in mind. There are many, many people who have acknowledged publicly that they had consumed marijuana sometime at some point in their lives, but they were lucky, lucky enough simply not to have been uh, caught at the time. But there are thousands of people who, are, who do continue to be caught and who are suffering the consequences. So it's really a question of imbalance or really of bad luck because it, as to whether you receive a criminal record or not. I think we also have to be aware of the fact that this is something that is fairly frequent. So there are many people who are likely, who are likely to be exposed to uh, legal consequences. If we look at Abitibi-Timiskaming, if we look at 2008 statistics, one out of eight people, so 12% of the population over 15, consumed cannabis during that year. Out of these consumers, one out of three used it less than once a month. One out of four had it one every one to three months. And a majority of consumers, six out of ten, consumed marijuana more than once a week during that 12-month period. So, if you put this in concrete terms, it means that every day when I travel around my riding, because of the number of people I meet, it's pretty sure that I meet up with someone who illegally possessed a substance because of the lack of action of uh, successive governments in uh, changing the law. That's a large number of people, and I think it's important that we stop pretending that these people don't face a criminal record or legal consequences. I think it's also important to stop backlogging the justice system with cases that are simply a public health uh, issue than a criminal issue. When you consume cannabis for personal purposes, that is more a health decision than a crime-related de decision. Now, we've often heard the government state that decriminalizing marijuana would mean that the money would continue to be in the hands of criminals we heard that argument frequently, but I think that doesn't make all that much sense if you consider that any enterprise, legal or not, faces questions of uh, supply and demand and price. The reason why criminal groups grow marijuana and sell it is because there's money to be made. Unfortunately, that's their main motive. When it becomes less interesting to do so, they will leave the market. 
And the reason why it's uh, interesting for them is they assume the risk and they're selling these substances at prices that do not reflect the cost of production at all. But if it's decriminalized, if someone uses marijuana for personal uses, uh, they will probably grow their own plants for their own personal consumption. Now, in a press article from 2014 on medical marijuana, which is still useful, there'd been an interview with the wife of a man who was consuming marijuana for medical purposes, and she grows some illegally. She knows it's illegal. But it's either you do nothing or you suffer. She figures that it costs her about five cents a gram. The market, black market price, is about ten dollars a gram, according to information I got from the Sûreté du Québec. So it's quite clear that if marijuana is decriminalized and prices remain that high, most people will opt to grow their own plants for their own personal consumption and eventually the black market will no longer be profitable because people will choose to grow what they consume depending on the prices. Plus if you choose to grow your own you can have better control over what you put in there in terms of fertilizer or what have you. So there may be a lower concentration of THC because you won't be seeking to grow the strongest product possible, but simply one that meets your needs. So there'll be a reduction in chemical fertilizers can, can end up in the plants that are sold on the black market. So by decriminalizing saying that that leads to sending money to criminals, that's nonsense, because I think that a vast majority of people who do consume marijuana regularly, who would no longer face possible criminal charges if they grow it themselves, will simply decide to do just that, grow their own plants, limiting access to their children and so on, but grow it themselves and no longer deal with organized crime. And if there is a significant drop in demand because people are growing their own, well, the black market will no longer be profitable and slowly criminals will stop uh, engaging in the uh, contraband of that product because it's no longer a profitable venture. When you're talking about growing a plant yourself, one has to understand that this isn't like alcohol. In the case of alcohol, it was important to have a lot of controls because the risks for uh, health with homemade moonshine were very high. In the case of a plant, if you grow it yourself, the risk is far, far lower. The consequences will probably lead to a reduced concentration of THC. So it'll be a plant that is less harmful to health than what is currently sold on the black market. So I think it's fallacious to say that decriminalizing marijuana will continue to send money into the hands of criminals because in the contrary it would allow people to grow their own for their own purposes and I think it's a fallacious argument. Now another thing that's important is when you decriminalize something you can take a public health approach. Right now, people are afraid to talk about their consumption of marijuana because they know it's illegal. In particular, adults, people who are a bit older, over 50, let's say, who for various reasons, be it uh, pain of some sort, uh, consume these products. And because of the consequences this may have on their jobs or their personal lives, if it became known that they consume marijuana occasionally, they don't talk about it. 
they don't get the information they need about the health consequences. Decriminalizing would allow them to get that health information without being afraid of the potential consequences. If it ever became known that they consumed that product, it would also allow them to speak far more openly of what's recreational use versus a problematic use. There's no doubt about it. Marijuana has significant health effects. It can have grave effects on psychological health, motivation among the young. But if we can't talk about this openly, we won't get that information and it's difficult to intervene. People will always minimize their consumption. They will not give us a fair picture of the situation, even in surveys about marijuana consumption. There are people who lie because they're afraid that that data can be obtained by a third party and have consequences for them. So a lot of people lie about their consumption because of the potential consequences. And that's why they don't get medical assistance when necessary. Maybe consuming once in a while is okay, but if you do it every day, maybe that's a problem. It's no longer recreational. It becomes a health concern. So it's important to change that dynamic, it, that approach to marijuana, switch from a criminal approach to a public health approach. We can compare this to alcohol. If you have one or two drinks a couple of times a week, that's not a big problem. But if you have to drink every day, or if you have to drink an awful lot every time you do drink, that's a problem. And then you do need help. So being able to talk about responsible consumption, knowing what's dangerous for your health and what isn't, that must be done in a context where there is no criminalization. Otherwise, there are people who will not talk about it because of the fear of the consequences. The older you get, the more significant those consequences can be for your job, for your family, and you may end up hiding and not getting the information or help you need, depending on your situation. Now, when it comes to decriminalizing, that would enable us to get answers that we don't have right now. For instance, consequences of long-term use on health. It would allow us to establish limits about, for instance, how long you shouldn't have consumed marijuana before driving. Uh, what quantity does it become dangerous? If people can't even talk about their consumption without being afraid of uh, consequences and legal consequences, we'll never get that information. And that information is essential. If we want to move toward legalization, we have to be able to determine what are the limits in circumstances such as driving a vehicle so that we can inform people properly. But if you don't have that information, specific information, we'll be running around in circles. I think it would allow us to get that information more easily. Now, another argument is that decriminalizing will do nothing to uh, reduce access by the young. That's not true at all. Right now, if someone consumes marijuana in a park, a police officer has no choice but to undertake all the um, panoply of legal consequences, such as criminal charges. This is going to go over a long time, legal proceedings, appearances in court, etc. So there's no immediate consequence on uh, consumption is in an inappropriate place. But if there was decriminalization, there could be limits. You could say consuming marijuana is prohibited in a municipal park. And you could have fines for that for people who consume marijuana in such places. So very quickly, there could be police raids to change behavior by young people but or any consumer. There would be fines. So if you see somebody consuming marijuana in that place, there'd be a fine. The cost would be immediate. 
People will therefore not be tempted to repeat that action in an inappropriate place or in a place where young people gather. So by decriminalizing, we can give some latitude to the provinces and municipalities to mute, to uh, Uh, legislate where this is acceptable, where it's not. And we could have interventions to reduce consumption that would be far more effective than they are right now. Every time we undertake legal uh, consequences, if you consider 12% of the population consume, consume marijuana in the past year, it's not realistic to bring all those people to court at least four million Canadians a year would have to be dragged before the courts. We can't even think about that. But if we end up with decriminalization, we could take action with tickets whenever uh, consumption is done in an inappropriate place. And that would also allow stakeholders, such as, let's say, parents groups, to target places where that um, consumption is inappropriate. So schoolyards, parks, various places uh, frequented by young people or the surrounding neighborhood. So it would give some latitude to the municipalities to ensure that consumption is done in places that are not frequented by the young. It could have a positive impact in reducing access, whereas right now it's in possible to regulate something that is supposed to be illegal in the first place. The problem is that by continuing to maintain simple possession as illegal, the product is supposed to be illegal, so you can't do anything else. When it comes to schools, if you catch someone possessing marijuana, you have to start uh, young offenders, trial, call the police. But if you find a young person in a decriminalized context caught in school with marijuana, you can ask them to destroy the substance. You can have a far better intervention, try to understand the reasons why that young person is consuming drugs rather than take a criminal approach. And you could also use a public health approach Maybe there are psychological problems that can be uh, aided, but by refusing to decriminalize, we're sticking our head in the sand and depriving ourselves of tools that may allow us to do something adequate. I think it's very important to remind members that the consumption of marijuana shouldn't be made something uh, completely innocuous. It can have consequences for health. I do recognize that, especially if it's used very regularly. It can harm motivation of the young, their psychological health. It has uh, effects on blood pressure, on the ECG. I do acknowledge that, and that's why because of the risks for health, because of the prohibition approach that just isn't working, I think it's important to decriminalize marijuana now. That would allow people to talk about it a bit more openly, talk about their consumption, get the health information they need, would allow for intervention. And decriminalizing now would take that trafficking out of the hands of criminals because as soon as you decriminalize, people who consume marijuana regularly will discover that it's far easier to produce what they consume themselves, grow it themselves, and have con control over their product. And pay far less than what criminals are charging right now, given that this is associated with legal risks that would no longer exist if it was decriminalized. So I think that's a logical approach, logical way of doing things. By maintaining this as illegal, it would 
have some control and the people who consume regularly will benefit because they'll be able to control the substance they're consuming better and get the health information they need in a more open way. Uh, questions?